Hello. In this video, we will see how to control the servo motors on your best robot. The most common way to do this would be to use the analog sticks where you can map the full range of the stick to rotate the servo motors to specific angles. The full range of the analog stick goes from minus 127, which is the minimum value, to positive 127, which is the maximum value. So you can map the analog stick in such a way that it can actually control the full range of your servo motor angle. Now let's think of a situation where if both the analog sticks on your VEX controller are actually occupied in controlling other H-bridge motors. In this situation, how do you actually achieve the control of your servo motors? Well, we could actually use these digital buttons to actually control the servo motors on your robot. So let's go ahead and see in Simulink how we can use these digital buttons on the joystick to control the servo motors on your robot. Now let's look at the Simulink model that I have ready here for this example. So you can see that I have a set servo block which is actually going to help me communicate or talk to the servo motor that is connected to pin number 3 on my VEX microcontroller. Also, I have a joystick digital block which will let me send commands from my digital buttons. And also, I have some annotation which tells me exactly what's the objective of this model. So if you look at the annotation, it says that I'm going to use the 5 up button in such a way that when the button is pressed, it actually will shift the servo motor to an angle of 60 degrees. And then when you release it again, it's going to go back to its initial state, which is 0 degrees. You can see that the set servo block actually has an input port called value. And let's see as to what this value input has to be. We can find that information by looking at the help for this block, which is double clicking on the block and it'll open up a dialog window. And here it says that the input values range is from minus 127 to positive 127, which means that the input coming into this value input port has to be between the range of negative 127 to positive 127. So how do we achieve this range of value, whereas the value that comes out from the joystick digital output block is always either 1 or 0? Now let's go ahead and connect these blocks to see what exactly is the output coming from these blocks. I'm going to go ahead and connect the joystick digital block to my set server block and also have to make sure that I'm using the 5 up button on my joystick digital block. So I need to configure the block correctly. So I'll double click on this and here I know my channel number or my button is 5 but the exact button that I need is not down but up. So I choose up and I say OK. Now you can see that it has highlighted the correct button. Now to be able to see what's the output coming out from the server block, we can actually interactively test this model within Simulink using our simulation feature. So to run this model in simulation mode, I would need some simulation input, which would simulate the behavior of a digital button. And also I would need a simulation output block to observe the output coming out from the set server block. So I'm going to go back to my best library and within the utility library you will see that I have a bunch of sources and sinks block. The one that I'm interested in is the toggle block. I'm going to drag and drop it here and for viewing the output I'm going to use the display block. Now let me go ahead and connect these blocks. And now, when I run the simulation by clicking on the play button on the top, I will be able to observe the output that's coming out from my servo motor as an angle based on what input I provide. So this toggle block essentially lets you toggle between a value of 1 and 0, which is essentially the output that comes out from your joystick digital button. 
So when I double click on this, it automatically toggles to a value of 1. And now when the value is set to 1, which means that I'm actually pressing the button, I do not see any output from my servo motor. Now let me go ahead and double click it to release the button in the physical sense. And still there is no change in output. I press the button, no output. Release the button, no output. Now let me go ahead and stop the simulation. Now we saw that this model is actually not giving us giving us the desired behavior because the input that is coming into the value input port of the set server block is invalid. What it really requires is a positive 127 coming into it so that it maps to a value of 60 degree as angle to the output. To achieve that, I'm going to go ahead and use the gain block from my math library. I'm going to drag and drop this gain block within my math library and place it in between the joystick digital block and the set server block. Let me expand this block so that you can see the value here. Now, instead of 1, I want the gain factor to be positive 127. So when I set this to positive 127, and now if I go ahead and run this model by clicking on the Start Simulation button, when I change the toggle value to 1, which means the button is pressed, you will see now that the set servo angle value is set to 60 degrees, which means that I have my button 5 up pressed in the physical sense and the set servo has, the servo motor has rotated by an angle of 60 degrees. Now, when I release the uh, 5 up button, which is toggle value 0, you will see that the angle value has gone to 0 degrees. 1, 60 degrees. Toggle value 0, 0 degrees. So this model shows us how we could actually configure our digital buttons to control the servo motors to achieve certain desired behavior. So we have seen that to achieve a value of positive 6 degrees as an output from your servo motor, you would need to multiply your joystick digital output value by 127 when 5 up buttons pressed. Now, if you look at the set servo block held closely again, you will see that, that the input value range goes from minus 127 to positive 127. And the output range goes from minus 60 degrees to positive 60 degrees, which means that this range of input value maps exactly to the output range of minus 60 to positive 60 degrees. Hence, Achieving a specific angle output using your digital button really is a linear problem. Now, keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and try this exercise. How to rotate your servo motor by an angle of minus 45 degrees using the 5 down button? So this brings us to the end of this video where we showed how you can actually use your digital buttons on your VEX controller to control the servo motors on your best robot. If you're looking for more training resources, please look at this information. Thank you.